Hello and welcome to a tutorial on the Dofer A110 standard VCO. We're going to be talking about some of the basic features and functions of the Dofer A110 standard VCO and uh, going over what all the ports on this particular module do and then going into a demonstration portion uh, later on to uh, kind of give you an idea of what else you can do with it. And that's where these other modules are going to come in that are on camera. Uh, I'm not going to talk about them right now. I'll sort of discuss them as they come up, as we uh, need them. So to start out with, let's go over the features of the Dofer A110. Starting at the top, uh, we have a sync input. This input is going to be used to synchronize this VCO waveform to another A110. So if you had two A110s, just imagine for a moment, A110 here, A110 here, um, and you had a waveform that was coming out of one on the left, you could patch it into the sync input and it would synchronize to the waveform of the other A110. So that's what the sync input does. To the right of that, you have the range switch. And this has five settings. So that's the top setting. It has uh, label minus two. Uh, that's the next setting, one, zero, one. And then there's a plus two. So those are your five settings. And this knob, or dial I should say, switch, whatever you want to call it, um, is actually going to move you uh, an octave. So whatever pitch this module is outputting, this is going to move it up one octave. Doing great. Let's go on to the next row. This is the first CV input that you have on the A110, labeled CV1. And this is going to be where you feed a control voltage source. Now, control voltage, uh, for those of you who don't know, is basically a signal that's sent to a module that tells it to do something. So in this case, it's a VCO, sound source. So you would want it to trigger a note uh, or possibly to change the notes as the pitch comes in or the CV comes in, I should say. So if you had, you know, like, let's say a fixed note, it would go in here and it would tell it to play a C, or it would tell it to play a D, or it would tell it to play F sharp, something like that. Um, on the other hand, if you had something like an LFO, our little friend over here, uh, feeding into CV1, let's say sine wave, then the pitch would move up and it would move down and it would move up and it would move down. Uh, dynamically as you went along. So that's a little discussion about what sort of control voltage can be used for sort of temporarily. We'll do a little demonstration later. Um, and that's how this particular CV can be utilized in this module. To the right here, we have the tune knob. This is going to allow you to tune or fine tune your uh, standard VCO by plus or minus six semitones. So all the way here, I would imagine, is uh, in the minus position. And all the way over here is in the plus position. Moving right along, we have a CV2 input. This input, very similar to this one, you can feed it a control voltage and it will send it to the pitch of the VCO. The main difference of CV2 and CV1 is that in CV2 you can adjust the amount of the CV going to the oscillator. So there you go. Moving down to the next section, this is the pulse width section. 
And to talk about pulse width, we're just going to talk about a square wave for a moment. Um, square wave is going to be what you'd be adjusting the pulse width of. So square wave, think square. Um, if you have a square and it's very, very thin, then you have a uh, very narrow pulse width. So all the way at the left, this would be a narrow pulse or square wave. And if you go all the way to the clockwise position, then you have a very wide square or a wide pulse. And then somewhere in the middle you can get different variations on that. And that's your pulse width. And then you have your pulse width CV one. This allows you to feed a control voltage into here, for instance, an A145. That will allow you to then dynamically change the pulse width. So you can have it constantly change, or not constantly, but you can have it change according to whatever uh, control voltage source you're sending into the A110. Now, the next set of knob and input here are the pulse width of the CV number two. So just like we had number one, we have a number two. And this is going to function for the most part in the same way in that it's going to go to the pulse width. So if you add a CV here, you add a CV here, they're going to be summed and then go to the pulse width. Uh, the difference again, just like we had with CV2 up here, is that the pulse width CV2 has amount of CV that's going to the pulse width. So there you go. You can see a sort of system developing. First CV uh, doesn't exactly have control over how much of the control voltage has unless you're taking care of that outside of the signal chain. Uh, but CV2 for the most part will have the amount where you can adjust it. So like you can adjust the amount of CV coming in there at CV2 and you can also adjust the amount of CV2 coming in there. And again you can use one of these or both and that's in both cases. Okay now we're going to talk about the waveforms down here on the bottom. Going from left to right we have a saw wave here to the right of that, we have a square wave. Talked about that briefly because we were uh, explaining a little bit about pulse width. And then next to that, we have a triangle wave. And then on the far right, we have a sine wave. Each one of these has a distinctive sound to them. And we're going to hear that in a moment. 